Now let's see how we can connect the cumulative frequency with graphs. Now that we have discussed about cumulative frequency, the less than and the greater than cumulative frequency connected with median, let's see how graphically we can represent the cumulative frequency, which helps us morally in predicting the situations through the graphs connected with the data. So in order that we have the graphical representation of cumulative frequency, we have two types of cumulative frequencies as we have identified. One is less than cumulative frequency and one is greater than cumulative frequency. Now in less than cumulative frequency, we observe that the values increase. That is, when I plot between the frequency, the mid values and the cumulative frequency values I get here an x-axis where I have all the mid values or the class interval values and here I have the cumulative frequency on y-axis then I get a curve which is increasing like this. So this is an example of a less than cumulative frequency curve and this is called an less than augive curve because we spell this as augive or augive curve derived from augive the word which is derived from the basic historical facts of mathematics which gives when I plot between xi and cumulative frequency I get a less than augive curve similarly when I plot between the xi and the cumulative frequency in this case being greater than cumulative frequency in this case being less than cumulative frequency in this case it differs because the cumulative frequency decreases when it comes from top to bottom in this case it increases and in this case it decreases therefore it gives me an x-axis a y-axis and an origin and all xi values I take on x-axis and cumulative frequency I take on y-axis then I plot each of the points the data points etc gives me some curve like this but in this case it gives me a curve which comes somewhere like this etc so my greater than cumulative frequency gives me a decreasing curve and a less than cumulative frequency gives me an increasing curve is a very important mathematical property or geometrical property we need to identify in graphs connected with cumulative frequency. So in this case we call this as greater than or give curve. Or give curve is what we call this kind of a curve. Interestingly, we identify here, this is increasing trend and here it follows a decreasing trend is what we connect with the real life situations in identifying the difference between the less than cumulative and greater than cumulative. Now let's take an example problem and understand more briefly on how we can generate the less than and greater than cumulative frequency graphs from the given data of this exclusive example problem. To start with an example problem, let's initially study the less than cumulative frequency graph. Also, it should be noted that here I take the cumulative frequency with the lower limits because less than cumulative frequency deals with the lower limits. So my x-axis is considered with the lower limits of the given data and here I take the upper limits of the entire data. So usually when I plot between x and y axis all my upper limits of the given data are considered along x axis and the cumulative frequencies as obtained through the greater, greater than cumulative frequency rule are taken on y axis and then plotted with xi or upper limit or I take here upper limit and cumulative frequency and I take here lower limit and cumulative frequency which I connect through x and y axis. 
it gives me increasing and decreasing curves. And note that each of the point as obtained in the Augur curve are called osias. So remember, each of the points are called osias. The points as obtained from the cumulative frequency versus lower or upper limits are the points which are called osias. And then we get the cumulative frequency graphs increasing and decreasing. But one thing which is important is the curve is continuous. Therefore, note, it's an important note that data must be continuous. If there's a break in the data, if there's no continuity in the class intervals, then drawing of an Ogive curve may not be possible. This curve being continuous demands for data to be continuous because the graph is continuous are the limitations for the cumulative frequency graphs. So let's see an example problem connected with graph and cumulative frequency. Now let's take the similar example problem as taken in the previous session of the marks obtained by the students in subject of mathematics and the number of students in the class who got the marks between 0 and 10. There are 5 students who got between 0 and 10 and there are 9 students who got the marks between 70 and 80 etc out here. So the frequency and the class interval is given for which I had to draw the graph connecting the lower limit versus the cumulative frequency. So let's see how we can connect the lower limit with the cumulative frequency for this less than type cumulative frequency distribution table. So for this cumulative frequency distribution table because this is less than type therefore I start from top to bottom. If this is greater than type I start from bottom to top is how I understand between the less than type and the greater than type. Initially with less than type I start from here where I get 5, 5 plus 3 is 8 and then 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 3 15, 15 plus 3 18, 18 plus 4 22, 22 plus 7 29, 29 plus 9 38, 38 plus 7 45 and 53 is how I get for the greater than type cumulative frequency. Now each of the lower limits are 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. Therefore, I plot each of the points which I get here as from 0 and 5, I get the first point as 0, 5. Then connecting this with this, I get 10 and 8 and then I get 20 and 12 and 30 and 15 and I get here an 18, 50 and 22, 60 and 29, similarly 70 and 38 and 80 and 45 and 90 and 53 is what I get as each of the points connecting the lower limit with the cumulative frequency. Now each of the x coordinates are lower limits of the class interval and each of the y coordinates are the respective cumulative frequencies. Therefore I have lower limit versus cumulative frequency. Now in order to plot all these points on the graph I just take an x and y axis out here. And I get here an x axis and a y axis through an origin through which I can understand how I can plot the Ogive curve. So with a suitable scale out here 0 to 90 I take on a scale of 10 centimeters equal to 1 unit I get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90 out here and then I take all the y coordinates out here with a suitable scale I take in a scale of 10, I get this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 on y axis where my x axis is with all lower limits and my y axis is all with cumulative frequencies. 
So initially to plot with this point 0 comma 5 is clearly in between which comes out here and then I have 10 and 8 which comes out here in the form approximately between 0 and 10 above 5.5. Then 20 and 12 comes approximately above this so I get this to be this and 30 and 15 is this and 40 and 18 comes to be somewhere here and 50 with 22 approximately plotted on to be this and 60 with 29 is here and 70 with 38 is here and 80 with 45 gives me this and finally 90 with 53 is somewhere here. So when I just plot I just want to draw because it is a continuous interval the class intervals are continuous therefore I can join this with a continuous curve. The, the most important limitation in case of graphical representation of cumulative frequency is that the class interval must be continuous and for such continuous class intervals only I can draw an object curve continuously smooth freehand with a continuously drawn smooth freehand. Therefore, when I join each of them, I get this, which is called less than object curve. Object curve, which is clearly an increasing curve as we discussed in the basic definition. So an object curve in case of lower limit versus cumulative frequency for this data is what we get in this shape, an increasing curve out here. So the graph helps us in clearly understanding that for the, num the number of students who got the marks less than 60 are approximately 32 or something like I got 29. So therefore there are 29 students who got marks less than 60 which I can get from the graph. So the graph helps us in finding any particular point for which we can identify the number of students and the number of marks connected to the audio curve. Is the basic application of graph of audio curve in applying to the given problem. So let's see the graphical representation of the greater than cumulative frequency curve or the audio curve or greater than audio curve. So in this case, we take upper limit versus cumulative frequency. The each of the upper limits are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 taken from the class interval. Now, as we have already discussed about greater than cumulative frequency, there's nothing but we start counting and adding from bottom to top. I identify that my initial frequency is 8, which comes in the greater than cumulative frequency. So adding up in stepwise process from bottom to top, I get 8 plus 7, which is 15, plus 9, 24, plus 7, 31, 35, plus 3, 38, 41, 45, 48, and 53 is what we get in the greater than cumulative frequency curve. So as we have taken the coordinates, clearly I take the upper limit versus the cumulative frequency, my first point is 10 comma 53 my second point is 20 comma 48 and thirdly 30 and 45 and 40 and 41 50 with 38 60 with 35 70 with 31 and then I connect this 80 with 24 and 90 with 15 and 100 with 8 is what we get as the points in upper limit versus cumulative frequency. The x coordinate is the upper limit for each of the points and the y coordinates are the cumulative frequencies for each of the class interval. So in this case when I sketch I get 
the x axis and the y axis where my upper limit comes out here and my cumulative frequency comes out here as the origin and each of the points are taken on a scale of 10 centimeters as one unit therefore I get 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 etc now similarly when I take the values along here I take in a scale of 10 20 30 40 50 60 etc now let's plot each of the points as obtained connecting the upper limit with cumulative frequency the first point is 10 and 53 so therefore 1053 lies somewhere in this region then 20 and 48 comes somewhere out here then comes 30 with 45 approximately comes between 40 and 50 and then 40 with 41 comes clearly with 40 and 41 then 50 with 38 comes somewhere here then 60 with 35 is the coordinate so 60 with 35 comes here and 70 with 31 so 31 and 70 comes here and 80 with 24 so 80 with 24 comes here and 90 with 15 so 10 and 15 it comes somewhere here finally 100 with 8 comes somewhere here now I get a curve which is showing the downward trend or the decreasing trend therefore the greater than cumulative frequency curve comes in a decreasing manner as I do it with a smooth continuous freehand joint curve is what I get so this curve as obtained is called greater than algebra curve or greater than cumulative frequency curve as we give the names in this case it is a downward trend or a decreasing trend in case of less than it is an increasing trend is how we understand between the less than cumulative and greater than cumulative frequency curves as obtained respectively through the lower limits and upper limits accordingly.